Hello, welcome back to Brando Sushi Live Noding. Um, in this episode, we're going to do something different. Um, we're going to try to do both a um, little bit of coding and a little bit of noding. So both, uh, we're going to use um, Python, um, Blender BPY or BPy. And then we're going to try to create like a bunch of boxes, just like very simple, you know, bunch of boxes. And they should be like getting bigger and bigger. And normally the way I'll do it using just nodes is will be something like this box. We create first box node and then viewer draw just for preview. And we know that the box, um, you can have a box like that, uh, which is has a polygon face, but you can also just use the edges. The one that I want is just using the edges. And if you are using like a normal blender workflow, you're probably just gonna create a box like this. And then um, if you want multiple boxes, you can use a um, array modifier and you want to enlarge it. So um, with modifier, you can kind of offset it, but if you wanna scale it, you probably need to use another, like uh, another object, like an empty, for example, and then you scale it up. So instead of relative offset, uh, we are using the empty and kind of scale it over and over again. Um, where is our empty? So this is our empty and let's put the empty in the middle and just enlarge it. So this is um, kind of the setup that you want. Let's say do it multiple time and go back to the empty, make it smaller. Yeah, this is kind of the setup that I, I like to do. Um, which is pretty cool already that you can do this. You're just using a modifier and a simple cube. Uh, but I found is that, let's say if you're, you want to add some kind of uh, resolutions, maybe you need to go back and, I don't know, it's uh, you can work it out eventually, but but I like to do it using nodes. So I'm gonna delete everything back to Spreadshop. Normally the way to do it using Spreadshop, we just provide um, either like matrix in and you're for, we can use range of number, range float and simply plug in into the, the scale. This is one way to do it. And you get this right away and you can control the count, um, the start and the end of the count, something like that. And you can rotate it and whatever it's gonna work um, accordingly um, we probably need to provide like a multiple rotation as well so random vector or something that's sequential will work this doesn't seem to be doing anything okay i need to add some angle okay so that's how you might want to do it um but you can also do it this way just plug in into the, the size of the box and it will vectorize itself and you can have now multiple boxes, which is really cool. This is really a advantage of um, Spreadshop. But there's another way, like um, if you are using like another package, like um, so, uh, sometimes in Maya and Houdini, the way, the way our brain will think, if we create object and we want to have multiple objects, normally, the most uh, like um, beginner would think that we actually need multiple boxes. So we need like multiple boxes like this and make it multiple time. And this is common, actually a good, kind of a good way of thinking um, if you want to start doing parametric modeling, but then you realize that you, you can do what I did previously you can have like multiple data and just pipe it in multiple array of data and then you can control all this array of data but it's a little bit more abstract doing it this way is a little bit clearer for beginner so multiple boxes you can have eight boxes and then make each one slightly larger so something like this but this is more manual work but still kind of okay if you want to do it this way because some other some package like maya might be Allow, uh, my, people might do it this way and then kind, kind of connect a lot of data into a single um, 
you know, nodes to control everything or using like Python script. It's kind of actually um, okay if you want to practice um, Python for that. Because with Python, you can work in a, in an object-oriented programming or OOP kind of a way. So it's kind of like a nodes, but it's kind of more abstract and you're using text most of the time. Sometimes that's scared, scared people a lot. Um, but it's a, it's a, it's a step, you know, it's a, it's a progress. Um, eventually you, you get really familiar with a lot of things and you can do cool stuff. Like in this case, um, I want to explain how to create, um, those multiple nodes. I have already the script here. This is just like, um, a quick script. It's not like, uh, I didn't make it efficient yet, but basically if I run the script, I can have these multiple nodes generating the boxes just like we did earlier manually. Uh, here I'm doing it just using script. I can have like hundred, oops, hundred boxes and just run the script. It's going to generate all the nodes. So we're going to end up with hundred nodes. And you, you can see that this is maybe not the most efficient way to work with nodes because when you have 100 nodes, it starts to slow down. You need to keep the nodes small and find another way to kind of put everything together. So let's have like five, run the script, and now we can, we can work with this. If you want to combine all of them into a single uh, viewer output, uh, you can do that. Just an, an example. Um, the funny thing with nodes, actually, um, if we actually generate box nodes like this, and then you can see in the history that what we just did is to bpy.ops nodes translate. Uh, this is the ops operators that generate the nodes, right? It's not actually recommended um, when you get, it's okay for beginner, like if you create nodes this way, create a cube or uh, create Suzanne or create a cube. And then you, you end up with uh, these operators, dpy.ops, but, but after you are more familiar with Python, it's recommended if you just directly at, uh, using the API. So you, you're not generating the data using this uh, ops macros. Don't do that. I mean, use the data and then the objects and then link it to the scene instead. So that's what I'm going to do here using nodes. If you are actually using, uh, if you dig how Blender create nodes, it's actually more or less um, like this. I I'm going to copy this guy. Um, I think I have the one that's simpler. Okay, it's basically like this. This is, this is going to create a, a single nodes with a viewer draw, connected to viewer draw for output, just a single box like this. So what I did here, basically I started uh, with this uh, bpy.data.node groups uh, bracket node three, because we, this is our node three name. So it's a, uh, if you use a bpy here, bpy.data.node not node groups with a name node three. If you want to type it out the this code and then create a no, new node, this is how you do it. This is actually quite nice. Um, the the node environment and the way it works with Python code is actually very very uh, friendly. You can do it this way. Hit enter. Okay, bpy function is not subscribable. Subscribable. Maybe I did a mistake here. Okay, this is the bracket that was wrong. Be careful with that. This is actually a command. This is a new, this is a function to create a node called SV box node, which is uh, this guy right here. If you look at the, uh, here it's a SV box node, that's the name of the node. Viewer draw, the name of the node is viewer node two. Okay, so that's how you create a node. Enter and you create this guy. And then if I if I change this to um, viewer node two, I can create a viewer draw. And just the next um, line of code is really just to connect the vertices and then the polygon for this guy. Uh, that's how I I actually learned this a bit. Just few spend a few hours. So eventually I 
thing, hopefully using Python, I can create nodes. And this should work for Blender compositing and Blender shader creations. Uh, some like a advanced, um, like a pro, like a not a advanced Blender artist normally would like to type it out like um, using Python code because doing it by hand can be really slow. Um, if you have start to hit like hundreds of nodes, the the appearance of nodes, of course, really helpful sometimes if you can encapsulate it uh, because you have you can have these parameters and stuff. Um, you can of course create like a UI for that, but Nodes is very very handy when you are working with a node tree, of course. So we have boxes, things like that, easily. This is my box size. This is actually to control the the size of the the box, I believe. So if I delete everything, run the script, you can see size five. I can change it here, size to twenty. Run the script again, I, and I have two boxes, one size 5, one size 20. So from this uh, one script to generate one box, we can modify it and just add a for loop, uh, which is a Python thing, um, something like this. That's why I have this uh, for i in range 5. And for the i, I I'm using the i here this i will grow per index so it start from index 0 goes up to uh, 1 last this up to this number minus 1 so i give the offset and because if i didn't give this offset the box will be on top of each other so that's why this just another for the location of the the nodes also important when you are starting to script uh, using uh, python for it so anyway, this is the final script. You can have a look at it, study it. Um, I'll I'll give this blend file for you if you wanna look at it. You can you can play around and then see what else you can do with it. For example, if I if I run this, it's gonna generate uh, these boxes, okay, many boxes, and then and then you can later use uh, another Python script just maybe to randomize this value, maybe if you like. That's a good good practice, good fun practice, and. Let's say if you're okay, you don't want a box. How about if you just use like a um, icosphere? Can we have like a multiple icosphere? And uh, you can, but you need you need to make sure you change the this uh, all this value here, like my box size. This guy doesn't have size, so maybe um, let's just use a, a cylinder. And uh, no, no, uh, a sphere. Sphere should have size. No, it's actually have radius. It's okay. Uh, let's try this anyway. Use a sphere. So sphere is called sphere node. So we just try. Just replace this with sphere node, and run the script. It's gonna give error. It, it doesn't have this parameter. I change it to radius. Run the script. Still giving an error. And a good idea is to look at the console. Verts not found. Oh, okay, verts. Apparently, this naming. There's a naming problem here with the vertices. Let me double check. Vertices. So I'm connecting the vertices. Attach. Let me dis disconnect it. I think this was mistyped by the creator of the nodes. Good idea is to look at the sphere nodes and then check uh, what's this guy actually is hmm bpy dot data notes groups node 3 let's find our nodes nodes 
we're not gonna be creating new nodes just check it out check the sphere nodes uh, what is this sphere nodes number four no it's sphere, sphere nodes just a sphere node and then we can we can put this inside a variable called a sphere sphere dot nodes vert do you have verts we don't have verts okay outputs edges polygons vertices vertices so I think the box nodes need to be updated. Um, okay, seems to be working. So now, if you want to, so let's try again. Sphere. So we have radius, and this is u and the v as well. So we can change the u and the v to small, smaller value. Twelve, maybe eight, eight. This is gonna be the the U and the V. So parameter name very important and just be careful. So hopefully run a script and we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five objects. Where is the how about the radius? Radius is not correct. Okay, apparently this guy is actually um, this developer put the, this underscore, I believe. No, what's the radius? Sphere. Uh, sphere radius. Oh, it's called it. It's called red. So delete everything again and run the script. There you go, we have it. So something to keep in mind. Sometimes, uh, so the every single nodes will have output and input parameter. Of course, um, let's display. It. In this case, for the sphere, the output is this vertices, edges, polygon. Okay, for the box, apparently, okay, it's, it's named differently. I just I just uh, found out. It's called verse edges polys. Keep that in mind. Be careful. Be careful. Uh, I'm expecting this to be the same, but anyway, this can be fixed. And then you have the this. Whenever you are thinking about object-oriented programming, and whether it's Python or Nodes, there there's some kind of similarity where you are generating all these like instance of nodes or of instance of objects. And each object should have like a properties or parameters and like a toggle, whatever. And this guy have input and output. Always keep that in mind. Once you understand that idea and how you can um, target it using Python, it gets to it gets like really uh, clear how you can select this object, you know, and then you you attacking changing this parameter and then. Uh, disconnect and connect link link them using um, Python so yeah that's a quick look at how you can script or you can use Python to create nodes for spare job I think it's a good and fun um, exercise if you are really want to be really good with Python um, because if you are uh, I mean next time maybe I'll try to also do it here in the 3D scene, but uh, since since Node workflow work really well with Python, that's why I'm doing it here in the Node tree. Uh, doing it here can be possible as well, but then, like like I say, this cube doesn't have parameter to work with apart from uh, apart from this uh, component level. That's why it's easier this way. It's like how Maya and Houdini actually doing it. Um, so if you are interested to study i recommend you to learn houdini apart from blender uh, maya also can be uh, interesting but maya but i think i like houdini because no houdini is totally in like nodes no node space um but yeah it's a it's a choice anyway thanks again for tuning in and i'll see you in the next video thank you bye